Hey guys, and how's it going? This is a bike I built, oh, I say we're probably about seven years ago or so now. It is made out of just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a lot of kitchen supply stuff. And the base of it was a couple of OCC Schwinn chopper bikes. Let's do a quick little walk around and you can get a better idea. It's kind of a lot to take in. It was built during the winter time and it was like two or three feet of snow outside. So my stash of parts that I normally build stuff out of was a little on the thin side so there was a restaurant supply that was local I kept going back to them and trying to find little bits to put it together so these are running two um, backpack leaf blower engines they were actually yeah like pesticide blowers they look like backpack uh, leaf blowers with hoppers on them they really didn't serve much of a purpose they didn't have a good uh, outflow of air to be a backpack blower and I didn't want to get in the business of shooting pesticide. So they went to a good home and the good home was this. It started out with this metal plate when I was building it, a piece of uh, stainless uh, diamond plate. And I mounted two engines on it. And I just wanted to see if I can get two engines to run together. And a friend had given me some old uh, timing chain and gears off, I think a Saab. So I took all those, kind of machined them together to get them the play to see if we can get them to play well together and we did and then continue to build the bike around that go back to the other side so it's still pedals got a long pedal crank set up the back tire is one from the Oshi uh, Oshi OCC Schwinn bike setups I got one upstairs I'll show you later on what one looks like and uh, basically the frame of one of them and the neck would have come down right there and then I had a, a trike that I built using two OCC bikes and I used the two rear halves being a trike and one front end so that's the extra front end that I used up to kind of extend what you got and then just hit it with the gas tanks so you can't see it blending in between them and everything else is just junk I had laying around to try to go make the mechanicals work. The more you look, the more you'll see. This is the throttle linkage going across for the two carbs. And uh, it's got like forks bent up and holding the linkage together. Meat thermometers pushed in for head temp sensors. Uh, these are soup ladles for the air cleaners. I can't remember what I put into it. It's been so long. Chain guards got a uh, big can opener for a uh, belt chain guard. The drive to tension the system is a three eighths or a half inch ratchet. I'm gonna say it's a three eighths ratchet bent up and then a, a pulley put on the end of that. This is a jack shaft and a brake setup attached to that so it stalls out the wheel. And that brake lever goes up through a couple of spoons, the rod return spring up to a pedal with a pivot on it. You break that with your foot. And it returns. The engines are tied together. Front one's got the pull start on it. Again, they're tied together. Then I took the other where the pull start would have been, put a pulley on that, and that's the drive that goes out to the jack shaft. And this is your on off. You're putting power from the engine to the back tire, is done through that tensioner that I just showed you. Let's get a, uh, a lever up top that you grab. Goes from a belt through the jack shaft. To a serpentine belt on the other side. That's the other side of it. Uh, skateboard wheels for tension. It's got spring-loaded tension on it. This they made uh, two versions of the bike. They made uh, I'm going to call it an adult version, but it's, it's really not. Which has like a 20-inch rim back tire, and then they made a, a, a kid's smaller version, which I think this is like a 16. So I used a 16-inch rim to be the hub for the other for the rear drive and that's connected with butter knives going around and they're riveted to and then attached to the, the outer rim. This uh, I needed a something to kind of take up the gap for the rear fender and this was a uh, fan like a floor fan is there one here? Uh, we're going floor fan and I went to go take it apart I thought the motor was just stuck it ended up being burned out so I was laying on the floor in the garage when I was building the bike and uh, it turned into the rear fender wrenches for support of it the exhaust is tea kettles 
each one on its own independence. When it runs, they flap like a tractor. You take the springs off, they really flap. You leave the springs on, it kind of calms them down and quiets it down a little bit. It's got sprockets for gussets on the frame because I had to extend the frame so that it would clear this hub. These are um, like noodle strainers. Again, restaurant supply. I like had a long handle on them. I don't even want to call them strainers for something. And uh, I mean, like fry, fry, fried food. <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, these are ice cream scoops. And I cut the handles off, made those for air to try to get a little bit of air onto the cylinder heads. These engines originally had a fan on the side of them that would cool, uh, have air blowing across them. So there, I got rid of all that. And I wanted something to kind of draw the air and give a little bit of heat sink. So adding to the tins that were on top makes a heat sink and also makes for when you're riding a little bit of air kind of flows through on it. Gas tanks or thermoses. And I just have one hooked up. I was going to try to set it up where they were both hooked up, but I figured what I can do is like a fill one. All you got to do is disconnect this leather strap and this leather strap. The tank can come right off. You can actually just pour it into the other one. It's a dog tags for my long lost dogs that have passed. So they're on there for mem uh, memory to get the ride with me. And again, the fuel comes out, goes through the fuel line, shoots down one line, and then shoots down the second one. Again, still pedals. The front handlebars are just kind of cut up and extended. Give them a little bit of a chopper look to it. And it was kind of like an OCC front end, and then I modified it from there. You can see where it originally was, and I cut it, put sockets in the extension to spread it out to the angle that I wanted. And then I took some uh, round bar and bent around them to help support it, and then came up with a gusset also to help support the front end. Works pretty good. It's got ratchets on it. Let's still turn. My hands weren't greasy. <laughs> You guess I'll turn those. The front wheels are racing wheelchair wheels. I got them at a swap meet. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. They were brand new. Uh, the thing is, they are only one side. You can see how it's got like the, the machine work done on it. Well, on the other side, there's nothing. You can see it. There's nothing in there. They're just kind of flat because, again, it was a wheelchair. So it was against the chair on one side, against the chair on the other. I took the center. It would have had another hub like this. In the middle and another hub like that in the middle two separate wheels i punched those out of there and i actually took a socket it ended up fitting just right down in between there and the outer bearings are still supported and the socket keeps the wheels keyed together it actually uh rides pretty good headlight was a chandelier uh the bezel of a chandelier kind of bent up around the bulb and hooked up wired up and then controls. We have just a regular bicycle front brake on that side. Let me see if I can do this with, uh, on the other side, we have a lever that pulls up, but it's also got a lock. You can lock it in place. And what that does, that's what does your drive. And then you could flip it up and lock it into place and it'll just stay locked in gear. For the most part, I just ride around holding it. And then when you want to let go, you want to go coast or something, you just let go of it and it's neutral again. And you want to rev it up and go, and you give it the gas. Gas is a uh, thumb throttle. And that comes down to this linkage. It comes down across. And it works all the carbs. Do we got it? I think pretty much it'd be some other things that'll poke poke their head out. I'll see if I'll bring them up. <laughs> a regular OCC seat and then I just painted it to match and then I took some leather and I wrapped some leather up around and over the top of the gas tanks. Give them kind of a cool look down the center of it. So again, it's been a couple of years since it's ran. I say we go fire it up, see if there's any issues it has. We can kind of dial it in if we have to. And uh, let's go bring her back to life. Get her ready to uh, do some putting around again. I just pretty much use it for like car shows and things like that. And they're fun to do. In wintertime, everything kind of slows down and gets quiet. Or it used to anyway. <laughs> and uh, so I would do projects like this and I really enjoyed them. So uh, this is what came of one winter. All right, let's go get set up and see what we got. Get some air in the tires. See if we got any fuel in it and fire it up. See if it needs... 
Can you love it? And if not, let's go make some noise. It's kind of gas in it. No idea. Yeah, this will probably soak up something if there is. Nah, bone dry. The engines are 76 cc's each, I think. 76, 78. Because I think it was a total of 154. What was the number? Why am I putting that back on? Let's go put some fuel in and see if it pisses out anywhere. Reason why I make them so they still pedal. I'm in New Hampshire. Most states are kind of the same. Uh, engine assisted bikes are not supposed to go over, do over 20 miles an hour. It's not going. Yeah, we're dripping. <laughs> now we know there's no gas in it. I shouldn't have overdone that, huh? Looks like right on the main fuel line going in. I don't know if it's just brittle or. Go cut those off of there and see if we can get a new piece of fuel line on. Should probably pop that tank right off of there and drain it back out. Actually, it looks like it's slowing down. I think we have to fix it anyway. Let's um, make sure it's the fuel line. I think it's right in the bottom right there, actually. Let's see if we can um, just cut that wrap off of there. What I did was um, I used copper wire. I kind of was trying to inspire myself with like early motorcycles before you had uh, hose clamps and all. You kind of wire tie stuff. Let's get that off of there. Yeah, it stopped itself. <laughs> Should we leave it alone? It was dripping and it stopped. I don't think it's the container itself. Right, let's go strap it back up. We'll keep an eye on that. Maybe we'll just we'll just retie it. But like I said, you just take the two springs off and the, and the two brackets. You can actually take the tank off the other side is the idea. If it's got fuel in it, you would dump it into this one. So it's got two gas levers. And those are straight down. Turn them on. And it's got a choke and a choke. I'm actually going to prime. <laughs> I'm going to get up and close and personal. And push some fuel through for the first time. Maybe. Let's see what we get. And she hasn't run in. It's been a few years. Let's uh, back off the choke a little bit on them. Sounds like it's running on one. We'll give it a second. That. Yeah. Give her a little bit of choke getting to go. Let's prime it a little bit more yet too. Good. At least I fired. Try it again. Give her a little throttle too.
change your battery. put much of a fight at all. I thought it was going to be much more of an issue. The fuel I use doesn't have any alcohol in it, so it does not kill the carburetors. They seem like they're doing just fine. How's our gas leak doing? Did it just need to get wet and soak a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> Cut that off premature. I'm going to go re rewire that. We'll air up the tires. They're pretty much flat. Yeah, they're, they're flat, flat and uh, put it down on the ground. See what I mean by the uh, teapots? You can make it quiet. You got city and country mode. You can put the springs on and put a little bit of tension on them and most of the exhaust just kind of comes out the little uh, tips and if you rev it up, they'll open up a little bit and you know, unrestrict the flow. Or you could just leave it like that and you run them wide open. Making tea. <laughs> As you can wire that up, chat a little bit. I'm going to leave a length run down underneath it. And I'm going to start to bend from the top. And just keep wrapping around itself each time. Holding some tension on them, making sure they're butted up together. And then when it's done, I can take the two ends and just kind of spin them together to, to lock it down. I really got into these, there's, there's no money, like there's probably $300 in this whole bike that I put together, just working with scraps, but it's the fun of working with just eclectic stuff that makes it enjoyable compared to like, you know, someday I would still like to do like, you know, take a Harley and modify it and, you know, spend $30,000 on a $10,000 bike. <laughs> <laughs> if you park next to that modified Harley, you take this and you put it next to it, everybody's going to come over to this as far as the, the looky loo part of it. There it is. So now we got both ends. You can kind of twist those together. I should have done them out back. That's right. That locks it. Do a lot, and then we'll just bend it around the back. You just want to kind of catch that on your legs. But it, it lets your, your creative juices kind of come out. I've got a bunch of these bikes. This isn't the only one I have. I've gotten away from doing it just because life has gotten so busy. But it's good for your mental health. I feel the need to go do one again. <laughs> Caught it on the way out. Hang on, that should hold it. Seems like it's not leaking any gas. Take a quick peek at those carbs. I'm sure they're doing all right. They have shut off valves on them anyway. Yeah, they're both open right now. I don't see anything. Doing anything. The only thing I, you know, once in a while I gotta put oil on that chain because that chain is a timing chain. It was internal on an engine. Now it's external. So it's meant to be soaked in oil all the time. And these things run some RPMs. You're probably, they probably run maybe 7,500 RPM. That's screaming. The chain is screaming. <laughs> it's held up pretty good. I may get something a little bit heavier on those for lube. Yeah, these are the, uh, those are, you know, fryer picking up out of the fryer and then I, I, cut the, I cut the handle free, bent him over. The one is bent this way and then the same on the other one. I bent the handle the other way and that just makes the chain guard. You wouldn't want to get caught in that. Let's go air up some tires. And when I was a kid, I want to say 10 years old, I think I tried making a, a motor powered bike. It wasn't even a gas motor. <laughs> it was like a, a washing machine motor. I don't know what my idea was. Was I gonna plug it into an extension cord and run it for 40 feet and unplug it? Well, that ended up in a fail, so I think they never left my system. I 
just kind of man manifested itself a little bit later in life. I just get those two in the front aired up. Of course, I put those stems in the worst place, <laughs> right in the lift. Hopefully, they don't get sucked in because they got like nothing in them. Go by feel. A little more. A little more than that one. That's good. We'll give her one quick look. Just check hardware and that kind of thing. Make sure nothing's loose and rattling. Yeah, you see on the inside right there. The points are, are right there. They are. As far as like the timing, they are 180 out from each other. So when they fire, that one fires and then 180 degrees away, that one fires. I, I had them both together, but it didn't seem like it mattered. It didn't seem like it shook any more or any less, but I got them 180 out. So I know someone's gonna ask. We'll wait for that to shut off. Let's show you a pedal them. Okay, get that to disconnect. I had to take the pedal cranks, heat them up, and bend them out just to clear on both sides of the engines, but it seems like it works fine. That's good. Eyeball for hardware. And let's see. You gotta dial the. This was the linkages off of the backpack blowers themselves, and I just kind of heated them up, straightened them out, put a bunch of add ons to it. You can see our welded on links going down below. And made it all one so it's nice because it's got a nice adjustment to it you know you got you could uh, dial them in separate from each other you can adjust the rods in between these are for electrical uh, connectors i used them for the rods and you can kind of change the pitch of the rods anywhere you need along the length of them and just kick that up on an angle it's got a spring pulling down to it that's it they're synced pretty good. And when it's cold, like one will push harder than the other. I remember I kept trying to go tweak it. Finally, I decided just to leave it warm up, then dial them in, and then it's been fine. It repeats itself every time. Or has been, anyway, repeating itself every time. We are missing a bolt there. So these are wrenches. Kind of just grabbing the top of the engine, supporting the top of the engine a little bit. Hand shaking, sorry. Uh, Keeps the top of the engine kind of tied to the frame. You may box this whole thing in. One of them's missing right there. Go grab it. And what we'll do is we'll take that one out. I'll see what size it is. And we'll put one in there. Well, that looks pretty good. Exhaust looks like it's okay. Yeah, they're all tacked. They're threaded together and then they're tacked to keep them from backing each out from each other. Then I had to kind of go polish them up to make them fit. That's all oil just pushing out from the exhaust. And they tuck around the corner. Just exit out the other side. Tight squeeze trying to get everything in there. And right, cool. get my missing bolt. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like when somebody paints, probably gives them that same kind of feeling. You just get lost in creativity. Problem is every one that you build, like seven more ideas come to you <laughs> of stuff you want to try. And then uh, the next one you build, you get even that much more. So it's not like you ever get caught up with all, all your ideas. Your, your ideas keep expanding. Let's look at that out of there. Yeah, it's just like a little regular 10 mil. Just go dig one of those up. Should be one in there. At least one we can cut down. Of course, all the little ones go to the bottom. There. Yep. That one. That's what I need. Then I have a lock washer on it. We'll go clean that one up on the wire wheel. See if we can go find a lock washer for it too. We'll run that one in. That's got it. I don't know if they can get knocked down. That one can get knocked down a little bit more. Guess not. <laughs> That'll zap you in the uh, appropriate 
place. I'm going to go see if I can get another boot for that. That one looks like it's fine. Let me get one for... Busted up one. A little hard to see, but that's what those bikes came from from the factory. There's a green one next to it, too. Future victims. <laughs> I think I built four bikes out of that stuff. Out of that style, anyway. Let's see if we get ourselves a good thumbnail shot behind the white door and show what it is. Uh, as far as how heavy it is, I want to say 70 pounds. Maybe a little less. Not bad. Those engines aren't very heavy. They're probably five pounds a piece. All the, the frame is all steel, the wheels are aluminum. Alright, go for spin, shall we? Iron hole. Probably should put more gas in it, but. We could pedal. Get a little punch, doing just fine. Alright guys, I think with that we're gonna go shut her down. <laughs> <laughs> 